Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to get your first job as a blockchain developer. So before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And also, if you're interested in learning how to build blockchain technology, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. All right, so let's talk about getting your first job as a blockchain developer. And I'm making this video in response mostly to a comment that I got under one of my other YouTube videos. I'll put that comment up here on the screen. Um, this is from Al K. I think I'm getting your name right, Al. Um, so Al says, I've done most of your tutorials and I've almost finished my own project I've been working on for the past month. Let's see, how many self-projects do you think is a good marker to start applying for junior or entry-level positions in the U.S.? It's a great question, Al, um, and I'll try to give you some pointers. Um, so first of all, I'm not going to actually give you a number, and here's why. I want to answer your question in a different way. You know, I don't think you should have a quota for the number of projects you should complete before you start applying for jobs. Now, and I'll explain more about that, but what I would say the short answer to your question is, I would start applying to jobs now, like right now. Like stop watching this video and start going applying for jobs, okay? So I don't know everything about you, Al, but I'm gonna make some assumptions and uh, try to give you some advice. Hopefully that's helpful for you and hopefully helpful for other people watching who may be in a similar position as you, okay? So if you're just getting started, I would say go start applying for jobs now. And here's why. The sooner you start applying for jobs, the sooner you will get feedback about what employers are actually looking for. What I would hate for you to do is, you know, just be doing projects and worrying about you know, details you shouldn't necessarily worry about, right? What you don't want to do is, you know, sit around for who knows how long and make speculations about something that you don't really have any experience with. And I don't say that to offend you. I'm not trying to um, say you don't know anything. It's just by definition, if you're a beginner, you don't know what it's like to be a blockchain developer. And you want to try to get the feedback from actual employers as to, you know, what they're looking for. And even the potential employers that you might want to work for, because not all employers are looking for the same kinds of skills. Um, and if you start applying for jobs, you're gonna get that feedback and know what to work on in order to actually, you know, do the job. And, you know, that might scare you. You might say, oh, but what if I get rejected? What if I fail? You know, I wouldn't be worried too much about that. I know that's easier said than done, right? No one likes to be rejected. Um, everyone has, you know, some fear of rejection on some level, right? But it really is the best way to get feedback about, you know, what employees are looking for. And if you don't get the jobs that you're applying for, you know, this is where some negotiation can come into play. You can say, uh, you can get feedback. You can say, you know, if I didn't get the job, what, you know, what can I work on? What would you want for me to be able to do in order to get this job if it's a job that you really want? And if you actually take that feedback from an employer and implement it and then come back to them later, if they still have a job available, that's going to be impressive to them. <laughs> You've got a way better shot actually getting hired from those people because they see you've gone off and improved your skills and have actually, you know, pulled the sword from the stone, so to speak, um, and have done what you need to to get the job. And that's an amazing quality to have in an employee, someone who takes rejection or takes no, um, or actually receives feedback and does something about it and becomes better. That's actually like the most amazing quality you could have from an employee outside of just doing your job on, you know, like you're supposed to the first time and uh, being a good communicator and working well with the team and stuff like that. So and that's another reason I would say, you know, go ahead and start applying now. Even if you get rejected, you're going to get that feedback. You're going to know what to work on. Um, and it's going to help you, you know, potentially get a job. And also if you start now, like you don't want to focus too much on just learning how to code and like not networking at all to get a job. Um, you don't want to kind of have this arbitrary finish line that you're is always moving whenever you say, oh, do I need to do another project? Do I need to do another project? Do I need to do another project in order to, you know, be ready for a job? And then you go to look for a job and then realize it actually takes you a lot longer than you thought it would 
to find who you want to apply to, to do the applications, to go through the application process. A lot of this stuff can happen at the same time in parallel. If it takes you, you know, a couple of weeks to go through this interview process, like you might be even getting better during that time. So I would say start sooner rather than later. Start now um, because lots of this does take some time and you don't want to, you, you might be underestimating how long it actually takes. Um, so that's another reason to start now. Um, so the last reason that I would say go ahead and start now, um, and this is just an assumption I'm going to make about you because it's true of a lot of people, um, and your question makes me think that it might be true about you. If I'm wrong, forgive me, I'm sorry. Um, but I really don't want you to be paralyzed by inaction. And a lot of people are this way. A lot of developers are this way. I have been this way in the past. I still am this way sometimes. Where, you know, you have, so you put so much pressure on the outcome that you're trying to achieve, which in your case is getting a job. And you have, you know, this sort of to-do list in your head or you, this set of qualifications um, that you think that you have to meet in order to, you know, achieve that goal. And those qualifications look so big or, you know, the amount of work that you think you need to do in order to achieve that seems so big. Um, and it just, or, it's, look, or it seems hard, right? And so you sort of get paralyzed with an action. You don't want to do anything because you're afraid you won't do it perfectly. Or, you know, you're just afraid of the pain that you have to go through in order to pull it off. Um, so... I would just try to encourage you to lean into the pain of, you know, trying to do that and try to cross that gap to get that job and start now because, you know, procrastination is only going to make it worse, right? So I hope that's helpful as some, you know, high level tips on why you should start looking for a job now. Now, let me give you a couple more pointers and maybe some other people who are watching this video, uh, kind of a counterintuitive point, especially if you're applying for your first job, which is when you're applying for jobs and you see the job description, um, here's, here's a counterintuitive uh, piece of advice. If you are 100% qualified for the job that's listed on the job description, you're overqualified and it's the wrong job for you. Okay, so let me clarify that. If, you're, if you have a job description out there that says, you know, you need two years of experience with, you know, solidity <laughs> and, you know, four years of experience developing web applications, right? And, you know, yada, 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 the list goes on and on and on. Computer science degree or equivalent, right? You see all this kinds of stuff on job applications. If you actually have all those things, you're probably overqualified for that position, right? And here's what I, why I want to say that is don't let, a job, don't let all the requirements on a job description, like, scare you. Like, if you don't have two years of solidity experience, which almost no one has, <laughs> uh, you probably still apply for that job. Like you probably have other skills um, required to do it if you're comfortable and you're a good developer and you're competent with solidity. Like you need some solidity experience, you need to be good, but you don't necessarily need two years of experience, right? A lot of times people just put those kinds of qualifications on a job application to weed people out. And a lot of times, you know, job applications, they they want people overqualified for, the, for their positions that they can be safe. This is where kind of bartering and negotiating comes into play. Um, you don't necessarily need everything that a job description requires, okay? Um, so also, you want to be able to grow into your job, right? You don't want to start in a job that is not going to challenge you and that you're going to be stuck in for a long time, right? And you don't want to get underpaid because it's really hard to move up in compensation at one job without having to change jobs. So you don't want to just go into a job that you're super comfortable with, super confident with. Um, and I mean, unless that's what you really, really want, which I would encourage you to shoot bigger, but I don't know what your situation is. Maybe that's what you need to do right now. Um, but those are some things to, excuse me, those are some things to think about um, when you're looking at job applications. So what else do you need in order to kind of get your first blockchain developer job? Well, I made another video recently on my channel about how to become a freelance blockchain developer. In that video, I talked about having a portfolio. And that's really important when you're getting your first blockchain developer job, right? If you haven't had any other blockchain developer jobs or you haven't been a freelance blockchain developer or anything like that, you know, it's really important to have a portfolio in order to get started. 
And you know, here are some kinds of things you could have in your portfolio. Um, you know, in the very least, you probably need a GitHub account or something similar with some code uh, that you've written so people can see the kind of code that you write. Um, and you know, this is really important if you're gonna work for a company and there's a technical person who's part of the hiring process who can see the code and understand it and they can, you know, sort of get a feel for your proficiency level and whether or not you're gonna be productive in their pipeline. Um, so yeah, I would definitely have some code that's public that other people can see. You know, a nice bonus is to have a website um, with your you know, skills listed on it, some portfolio pieces. If you're just starting out, you know, you can build projects for a portfolio. That's what you're talking about. You said you've been working on some, uh, your own project for the past month, which is awesome. Yeah, congratulations, that's great for you. Um, so definitely include that on the uh, website in your portfolio. And if you have any other programming experience outside of blockchain development, you definitely want to list that, you know, on your resume, in your portfolio. It's all relevant to getting a blockchain developer job. And the blockchain is very new. Um, and, you know, you might thinking you only want to include your blockchain experience. But if you have other experience, that's something that people are going to want to see also. And it's a big bonus. So, you know, I'm probably gonna create another video with some portfolio ideas for you guys. Let me know if you're interested in that. You can leave a comment down in the comment section below. And also, I'm gonna be talking about this more on my channel. I've talked about it a little bit, which is I am going to be releasing um, some, a big surprise <laughs> uh, soon, where we're gonna build a big real world project. Um, and, I don't want to say too much because I don't want to give too, way too many details, but stay tuned on that. This should be something that will help you guys a lot when you're trying to become a professional blockchain developer. So that's all I got for today, guys. Hope you all like this video. Again, if you're interested in learning how to build blockchain technology, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. If you're new around here, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the like button down below because that really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to build blockchain technology. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.